Hey kids, welcome to the video, Discount MTG here, because we know I am nothing if not discounted. But um, today, uh, we're going to start off real quick. Uh, there's something that, something in my last video, I did some I did some quick math. I basically, uh, I really dumbed down the hypergeometric, uh, hypergeometric equation. So basically, what I was showing was, right, if you flip a coin 10 times, on average, five of them will be heads. I was showing the equivalent for a magic deck, um, and while I can, in the context of what I was doing there, I can account for the sample size getting smaller, I cannot, I cannot account for a success or a failure the percentage that that affects the the percentage that affects the outcome I it is a shortcut I didn't figure anybody would see it but someone in my small comments was smart enough to see it so mr. neon city PD um, that is the situation as it were um, I, I did check I did check after by the way you left your comment it um, the difference is like 0.06 percent around for both numbers so it doesn't really matter but that that is what happened but um, anyway, I didn't really, I was lazy, honestly. I did not feel like taking the hypergeometric probability equation, rearranging it to do what I wanted to, and like sit there and solve it out. But anywho, uh, today we're going to talk about kind of the, kind of talk about the new pioneer bannings and what uh, what that means for, for the combo players. So basically, what Wizards of the Coast knows is they know that it is really, really annoying if they take a subset of their player base, in this case combo players, it's usually combo players, and tell them, hey, there's no place in magic for you. So um, basically, what, what, Pioneer, what, what Pioneer started out as, and what a lot of people wanted to jump into it as, is it was this format where you could play the cards that Wizards of the Coast told you you couldn't play before. You know, you were allowed for the first time to actually have your fun and do what you wanted to without people whining and complaining and getting everything banned. Well, unfortunately, Wizards of the Coast does what they usually do, and they push it a little bit too far. Because as much as I want combo players who have a place to play, the top four out of five decks in any meta being the same type of deck is never healthy. You know, as much as I love control, if four of the top five decks in modern are control, I'm going to be like, whoa, 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 let's pump the brakes, something needs to go. So that's that. That's basically where we wound up in Pioneer. There was just there was just too much combo. It made it made all the other archetypes almost obsolete. And the reason um, the reason that it made them obsolete is because they just don't have the same level of interaction. That's why in um, and this is this is sort of true for modern as well. Pioneer just kind of got pushed to the same point that modern did, and I assume it will. Uh, wind up in about the same place, right? Because in modern, all of the really good combo pieces have been banned, and all of the really good control pieces stay. So rather it being like this even playing field where the control deck does something, and the combo deck does something, and back and forth, and they're both kind of fighting, it's just the control deck will always run over the combo deck, because they, um, they always have a way to answer what they're doing, they always have a way to find more answers, and the combo deck is looking for, is looking for you know, these individual pieces in their deck, and just getting them countered again and again is devastating, because they they don't have any of the efficiency or redundancy that they need to actually repeatedly pull out their combo. Um, so basically, what's what's happened with combo players is over uh, over the time of Magic, they've been told that they can't play, and obviously you can't play combo in Standard, and then um, you can't play combo in Modern, as they've learned, because it just keeps getting banned and banned and banned. And now we're on to now we're on to Pioneer. All the combo decks got banned out, and I think the. the um, the kind of danger with these with these player based bannings again i think the current one in pioneer is justified but i i think a lot of players just aren't intellectually mature enough to analyze the difference between a card they don't like and a card that actually needs to be banned for example i with a passion i despise primeval titan decks and i despise tron decks but i don't necessarily think that those decks need to go but i think and there are so many people who are saying oh fairy time raveler needs to be banned in modern like what what world are you what, what world are you living in where a three drop that bounces something and says one loyalty? How is that on turn three more broken than playing a primeval titan that essentially wins you the game or a karn that essentially wins you the game? And that, that's where that's where the disconnect is. They just don't have the um, they just don't have the mental maturity to like really really look at the difference and go, okay, you know. I really hate this card, but also I know that it's not it's not actually broken. Um, I think I need to move my face cam so we can actually see the prices. There we go. Um, but so today we're we're gonna kind of talk about where you can go as a combo player, and I think um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to maybe you know help some people out look at legacy. Um, I am calling this budget. If you're one of those people who's like, oh, if it's over twenty dollars, it's not budget. Go away. Not not the video for you. Um, 
But today we're going to look at a couple combo decks in Legacy, a couple of the biggest combo decks in Legacy. Um, we are actually leaving out Ant, that's Ad Nauseam Tendrils, because that deck is really heavily reliant on, um, really, really heavily reliant on a reserved list card, and that card is Lion's Eye Diamond. You like a little bit of wordplay there, as I briefly forgot what the card name was and brought it back around as I remembered it. But um, Lion's Eye Diamond is over $300 a card, and that's just completely past the budget. A place of of those in and of itself is way over the budget of where I wanted to keep it for this video. So, ANT sadly out for the budget consideration because there's no real way to replace that card and have the deck still function as intended. So the first deck that we're going to talk about today is Sneak and Show. So this is a deck that's based around um, just as quickly as quickly as possible. You're trying to get either a Gristle Bland. You're, you're trying to get a Gristlebrand, a Progenitus, or an Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, into play as quickly as possible. And the way that you're doing this is with the card Show and Tell, or with the card Sneak Attack. Uh, hence the name Sneak and Show. But, and then, so the, so you're trying to pair one of those, what is it, I think there's, uh, nine, yeah. So you're trying to pair one of your nine targets with one of your eight ways to put it into play, and then hopefully, essentially, win the game on the spot by putting those cards together. And then to find your combo pieces, you have Brainstorm, Ponder, and Preordain. Um, I believe this is actually, this deck plays more cantrips than Delver, because Delver usually only plays, uh, eight to nine cantrips, and this, this deck is playing almost as many as you as you can out of these out of these big three here with a total of eleven, and then to back up your combo and uh, and to, to back up your combo and try to make sure that you can actually push it through, you have days and the omnipresent force of will. So the way that um, the way that I've budgetized that this deck um, here we go. So. I took it, and this this number up here, the one thousand number, it's not entirely accurate because uh, you'll see whenever you go over to uh, whenever you go over to TCG, it's actually about nine hundred. But anyway, uh, so what what I've done is I've taken out the dual lands. I've adjusted the mana base a little bit. So um, in the previous mana base, you were playing uh, four four Scalding Tarns and two Misties, which is just five hundred dollars. It's there for no reason. So those cards have been replaced with about um, about one hundred and twenty five dollars in fetches, in flooded strands, and polluted deltas, and then um, and some Mystic Sanctuaries. You do lose the one thing you lose the ability to play Basic Mountain, which can occasionally hurt you in some matchups, but. I think the the budget of being able to cut out three hundred dollars by just not playing the scalding tarns, I think that's worth the potential downside of not having access to the of not having access to the basic mountain. We keep the number of fetches the same, so you can still uh, so you because obviously in legacy fetches are an actual game piece because they shuffle away cards with force will. So the number of fetches is still is still six as with the original deck list. Um, and then obviously the fifteen hundred dollars in volcanic islands has been replaced with fifteen dollars in steam vents, a little more than fifteen, but it'll it'll get there after rotation. Um, the one so the the two big sticking points that you're probably noticing as you as you look at this deck list right here are you still have to spend. And uh, you still have to spend a good bit on Force of Will, and you still have to spend a good bit on Ancient Tomb. I think Force of Will, um, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to kind of why we're getting into this in a moment, but um, Force of Will, obviously just the best counterspell ever printed. Everybody knows it, everybody loves it, it's Force of Will. And then um, the other card, the other card that we cut for actually these two Mystic Sanctuaries is two City of Traders. City of Traders is a $150 card. So those, um, I, we, there were actually three City of Traders, um, three Ancient Tombs. One City of Trader got cut for another Ancient Tomb, and then the other two Cities of Traders got cut for uh, Mystic Sanctuaries. And then we are keeping the Ancient Tomb because the Soul Lands are definitely important for this deck. Going down from four to from six to four will hurt the deck a little bit mathematically, but it should uh, it should be able to roll along. So then, uh, if we look over here. All right, um, so we're going to look at this. Uh, this this one is a screenshot because I couldn't get TCG to display both of the both of the cards at the same time. So I'm just going to uh, throw the throw the screenshot up. I might go to the edit, might go to the effort of uh, editing my face cam to still be over it. I might not. Um, but if you if you look at it here, um, you see nine hundred and four dollars for the total price of the deck. So that is that is the total price of that that is the total price of this deck. If you in my budgetized version of the deck, if you go buy it off TCG right now. Um, so now the second deck we're going to look at 
is uh, is this Golgari Depths deck, right? So this is a almost four thousand dollar deck. Um, this is another one of the like kind of uh, pinnacle combo decks in Legacy. And with this deck, you're basically looking to uh, you're basically just looking to take a uh, to take a Dark Depths and remove all the counters. And the way that you can do that is with a Vampire Hex Mage or with a um, or with an actual Thespian stage here. And then the whole rest of the deck is basically just trying to get Thespian stages, get Dark Depths, stop your opponent. You got some card draw here with the Dark Confidants. You got more Tutors with the Elvish Reclaimers. You got some interaction with the Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay is one of the best removal spells in Legacy. And so um, my job was budgetizing this, and I did, a, and I, I've did, I've done, <laughs> I've done a really decent, I've done a really decent job, I think, and I've gotten this deck down to on the TCG version around um, six hundred and fifty dollars. And so basically, what I've what I've done is um, I went in the sideboard and I messed around a little bit. I cut about one hundred and eighty from the sideboard, not one hundred and eighty. Uh, 130. I cut about 130 from the sideboard just by replacing the Tarmogoyfs and the Sylvan Library with three Veil of Summer. I think there's a good chance that's just what it should be to begin with because Veil of Summer is such a beating and it's so good against so many decks. Um, in the land slot, we did a similar thing with the fetch lands. We saved about $150 by just replacing the Verdants with uh, Windswept Heaths. Um, you can't really you can't really get away from the Urborgs or Wastelands. Those are pretty key for the deck to have. Um, obviously, you need the Dark Depths. In the um, in the 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 main other thing that we really that we cut. Obviously, we're cutting the we're cutting the dual lands for the Overgrown Tombs. You guys know what's up with that. But um, the main the, the main thing the main other budget concession that we've done here is we've taken the three reserved list insanely. Oops, we don't need you anymore. The three reserved list insanely expensive, um, almost over four hundred dollar Mox diamonds. Wow. And uh, and we've replaced them with uh, we've replaced them with Lotus Petals. Lotus Petals are obviously not the same as Mox Diamond, but I don't think this is—I don't think this is really a case. Uh, I don't think this is really a case like Storm, where you look at this and you just absolutely have to have the the Lion's Eye Diamond because Mox Diamond, while it's a good piece of mana ramp, it's it's not quite the same. You know, it's not like it's not like the deck will not function without Mox Diamond. You're not playing lands with like life from the loam or getting them in the graveyard is super important or anything like that. It's just, it is just simply a mana piece. Um, on that note, you can also, I didn't have it in here because it's more expensive, but like if you open some double masters and you get, uh, and you get Chrome Mox, Chrome Mox is another card that can go in that slot. But, um, and, oh, and we'll go over here to the TCG and the total for this deck on TCG right now is 657. Um, so now we're going to go over here and I just need to slide this here. Yeah. Um, and now my face cam needs to move. Oh gosh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay. Um, so we're going to go over the lands deck first, apparently, because that's the one that I pulled up. Um, so the reason that we're the, another good thing about both of the, getting into both of these decks right now is both of these cards are, both of these decks are getting reprinted in double masters. And, um, pieces of them rather and you can uh you can look at these percentage numbers here and call me crazy or whatever you know obviously i'm wrong even though every single time a set comes out the cards drastically drop from what they're pre-ordering for but no i'm wrong um you know shoot so the prices that i have here are i'm expecting drops of 30 to 60 percent on uh depths and confidant i'm expecting a 40 to 50 percent drop on overgrown when it rotates and i'm expecting a 30 to 50 percent drop on thoughtsies the only reason that these numbers are that you even have numbers as low as 30 percent is the prices have already free fallen so much at the release of the set sometimes that can be a sign that the prices are not going to drop as much when the set actually releases sometimes like in ultimate masters people assume that and then the prices get crushed again to the 50 percent so that's um that's where this high 60s high 60 number is so if you do the math add everything up together you're looking at for the dark depths a like solid tier 1.5 super competitive legacy combo deck that you can play you can enjoy you can get your fix you're going to wind up spending in between 560 and 515 dollars or 580 rather in, in between in between 515 and 580 dollars for and that's about the price that's lower than the price of some of the pioneer decks so i think that is extremely doable and then we're going to go over here to this one did i do it did i switch it there we go 
Um, so then this is the this is the sneak and show deck. So um, on Force of Will, I'm expecting a drop of 30 to 40 percent. I think this card definitely has some like oomph. You know, I don't see this card going down 60 percent. Doesn't mean it couldn't. I just don't. I just don't think it will. I think this card sees enough play in Commander that that will hold its price at that. And then I think sneak attack is going to be a sneak attack is going to be a new bulk mythic. There's just not a lot of demand for it. It's its third reprint, you know. I think this is going to be like a five, six dollar mythic. And then obviously steam vents at rotation going to be going down as well. So we're looking at in between 140 and 190 dollars saved, leaving you out the door for another super competitive, super fun legacy combo deck out the door, um, 715 to 766 dollars. So again, there you go. There are two decks that you could definitely get into if you want to get that combo fix and you're not playing Pioneer anymore. Sell your Pioneer cards, get into this deck. I promise Legacy is a better format anyway. And hopefully, with a bunch of these older cards getting reprinted and the price is becoming more accessible, I'm hoping that more people will start picking up Legacy because it's a format I love to play and no one in my area plays it, which kind of sucks. Anyway, catch you later.